Here at the Sega Guys, we've established that the Dreamcast had an incredible fighting game library. One that is rivalled by that of the Sega Saturn with its own legendary fighting game selection. And even the Mega Drive has a number of fighting game classics. But what about the Master System? Hey, I'm Dan the Mega Driver of the Sega Guys and in this video, I'll be counting down the top 10 Sega Master System fighting games. Wait! Are there even 10 fighting games on the old Master Saster if we exclude wrestling and boxing sims? Well, yes, just about. So let's take a look at these top 10 contenders. Before we start, it's worth stating that all but three of these games were played on my original PAL Master System. For some reason, the three Korean titles didn't play on my real hardware. And to make matters worse, they didn't even play on Kega Fusion either. But I managed to get them working on the awesome Mecha emulator. And that leads us nicely into number 10. We start with this unlicensed Korean title, Street Master. And if it looks familiar, that's because it's an unofficial unlicensed port of the first Street Fighter game. So, take Capcom's innovative but very deeply flawed original game and port it with garish visuals, even more impossible special moves and atrocious sound and you have, for my money, the worst fighting game on the Master System. A game where the jump kick is about the only move that actually works, where the tiles of neon coloured sprites clash with drab backgrounds frequently, this game has nearly no redeemable features. Unfortunately, that dubious honour is almost shared with number nine. Number nine is another unlicensed Korean game which props up the rest of the top 10. Jang Pung 2 is not so much based on Street Fighter, but rips six character sprites straight out of Street Fighter 2 while renaming them and slightly altering them. But it's not just Capcom's classic that is looted here. You'll see backgrounds stolen from other 8-bit titles such as Streets of Rage. It wouldn't be so bad if the game played well, but of course, it doesn't. See, in this footage where my character just seems to be standing there, I'm actually hammering the attack buttons, just hoping for something, anything, to come out. This game has some of the worst input delay I have ever seen in any video game. It's borderline unplayable and only tops the abysmal Street Warrior by looking slightly nicer. A sequel to Jengpon 2 would follow on the Master System in Korea during 1994 and I bet you can't wait until we get to that. At number 8, ah, uh, Pit Fighter. Before Mortal Kombat, this was Midway's digitised brawler in the arcade. Unlike that series or Street Fighter, in the arcade, Pit Fighter was never actually any good. On the SMS, everything is stripped down. The number of fighters is reduced to two, so it actually makes this list as a one-on-one -on -one fighting game. The sprites themselves are tiny, the backgrounds are muted, and the gameplay is pretty much near broken. The whole game plays with one life bar, so it works like you're permanently in survival mode. The CPU is cheap, even on the easier setting, but you can cheese your way through with a jump kick. A bad port of a bad game, but a more solid and cohesive experience than the previous two unlicensed games. Things can only get better from here, especially with a fighting icon coming next. Right? At number 7, we have the game that changed it all, where Street Fighter 2 came to the Master System in Brazil in 1997. The story to this port is that Tektoy asked Sega and Capcom several times if they could port Street Fighter 2 in the 90s, and every time, the answer was a resounding no. Until one day, despite being told to categorically not port Street Fighter 2 to the Sega Master System, Tektoy just said, We're gonna do it anyway! First impressions are good. The music sounds okay. The speech announcing the rounds sounds clear, and the visuals actually look great for Sega's 8-bit hero. There's eight fighters, 
which seems an acceptable compromise from the Super Street Fighter 2 influence which you can see in the sprites and the profile pictures. And then you start playing and it all completely falls apart. Playing at a fraction of the arcade's frame rate isn't anywhere near the worst of it. There's input delay, special moves rarely if ever come off, though the CPU actually spams these special moves constantly by the way. Collision detection is broken and sometimes even when you land a hit it doesn't even register. Overall it's disappointing and you can see why Capcom and Sega never gave this port their blessing. At number 6 we have yet another Brazilian Master System exclusive in Mortal Kombat 3. But in this case it's actually a version of the official Game Gear port with the screen expanded and the colours reduced to accommodate the SMS hardware. There's just a handful of fighters and two stages. But what's here works. The low frame rate makes it feel slow and jerky, but it is playable. Special moves are pretty easy to pull off, though maybe a little bit too easy given Sub-Zero kept doing his ice shower move whenever I tried to uppercut. It's messy, it's glitchy, and it's janky, and once again jump kicks are well overpowered against the CPU. But it's playable, even if it is the worst port that the series saw on the Master System. Speaking of which, at number 5 we have the original Mortal Kombat for the Master System, developed by Probe just in time for the worldwide Mortal Monday launch on a bunch of home consoles. The Master System port is very similar to the Game Gear in terms of content and performance. What you get is 6 of the 7 playable fighters from the arcade, again just 2 backgrounds just like Mortal Kombat 3 and once more a very low frame rate. Since this is a native port and not just the Game Gear version with an expanded resolution, this jumps ahead of the third game in the trilogy. Moves feel just a little bit more responsive, and despite the frame rate in the teens, it actually plays fairly well. I even remember a number of people enjoying this version back in the day, so overall, a very respectable version of Mortal Kombat to play on your 8-bit console. Number 4, Virtua Fighter animation is quite a strange one. You remember the infamous Virtua Fighter 2 on the Sega Mega Drive and Genesis, which has become something of a joke in recent years, and this version of the game shares much of its DNA. But regarded on its own terms and not as a port of a superior arcade experience, this is actually a fun and interesting game. The combat takes place on a 2D plane, but the moves you know and love from the mainline games are present and work as you'd expect. The big difference here is that this follows the plot of the Virtua Fighter anime, with characterizations that present the fighters as far younger than you'd expect. Originally, this was a Game Gear game, and this was ported by Tectoy, and to be honest, they've done a brilliant job here. It was never going to stand in for Virtua Fighter 2 on the Saturn, but overall it's a solid fighter, with a great cinematic story mode that is well worth your time. Jang Pung Free at number 3? Yes, you're hearing that right. Whilst the second game was a terrible asset rip of Street Fighter 2 and other games, and the first Jangpung doesn't even seem to exist, Jangpung 3 is actually really good. And I mean <laughs> really good. It opens with a decent if really goofy cinematic that talks about neo-Nazis creating a cyborg called Cell. No, not that Cell, this weird dragon thing. Anyway, you have 11 fighters that are mostly original. There's certainly no sprite rips in this game. And the game looks good. There's some nice use of color, detailed backgrounds, and while the fighters are smaller than a lot of the games on this list, they're still decently detailed. Sadly, the music is absolutely awful, but what it makes up for is how it plays. This is the real deal. A solid frame rate, good collision detection, and hitboxes that actually work as you'd expect. There's some cool special moves and it really does seem like it ticks every box to make it feel like a Street Fighter game on the Master System. Overall, it's just incredibly well made. To be honest, the only thing stopping it from being even higher on this list are that it wasn't playable on my PAL Master System and that the game is still a bit of an unknown in terms of balance and movesets. But still, it's an absolutely stupendous 8-bit fighter worth trying. Spot number 3 is Shared with Sam Gucci Free, also known as Sango Kushi Free. Now you may think making joint third is a cop out, and that brings the top 10 to a top 11. But hear me out. Look at these two pictures. 
they're the same picture. Zengogushi Free and Jang Pung Free are basically the same. The music is the same, the life bars and the HUD are the same, the wind quotes are the same, and even the intro is basically the same, the sprite swap. And it even has the same font and the reference to the Hyper Z80 for the CPU controlled opponent. This is the same game. The Doki Doki Panic to Mario 2. The Decap Attack to Magical Hat Turbo Adventure. You get the gist, right? So everything that I just said about Jang Pung Free applies here as well. Yes, there are different fighters and backgrounds, and it is set in historical Eastern period rather than a futuristic Western one. All in all, it's still great. And just like Jang Pung Free, it's definitely worth your time. And number two, we've got Mortal Kombat 2, which is considered by many to be the pinnacle of the series in the arcade and on the 16-bit consoles. And in my opinion, that does go for the Master System port too. Whilst the port of the first game was okay and the third game was passable, the second game of Master System is fantastic for the hardware. Yes, there are only eight characters of the original 12, and again, we have just two stages, but it all handles so much more fluidly than the other two ports, and most of the other games on this list. Special moves come off really easily compared to the other games, along with many of the original game's fatalities. And while the frame rate is poor, you definitely quite quickly get used to it, and the inputs seem to accommodate for that performance. Overall, it's definitely the best fighting game arcade port on Sega's 8-bit console. Number one probably won't be a surprise to dedicated Sega Master System fans, but without a doubt, the best fighting game on the Sega Master System is the absolutely named Masters of Combat. This is a fighter made for the console-specific strengths and considerations, which in turn gives its players something that is quintessentially Master System. There's a lot that is unique here. Only four characters make up the roster, plus an unlockable boss, and bizarrely, there's only one attack button, with the other that's used for jump. Now this may sound horrendous, but it's actually pretty clever in its execution. With jump mapped to a button, utilizing up and the directions on the pad allows for a plethora of command normals that you wouldn't normally have access to. Unlike almost every other game on this list, this setup allows you to chain together some decent moves and combos. Visuals are detailed and colourful, and even though the fighters are quite small, this allows the game to operate at a smooth frame rate. The various difficulty levels all have their own pros and cons, and of course, there's the unlockable fighter at the end for all your troubles. So the best fighting game on the Master System? I certainly think so. In fact, it may be the best 8-bit fighting game that there is. So there we have it. 10 Sega Master System fighting games ranked from 10th to 1st. Have you played any of these? And how would you rank them? Comment below or join the discussion on the Sega Guys Discord. If you've enjoyed this video, please give us a like and a subscribe as that really helps the channel. And if you want to be extra mega, think about becoming a member with a bunch of perks from as little as 99 English pence. But regardless of any of that, thank you so much for staying until the end of the video. And until next time, we will see you on the Sega side.